Welcome Smith Ute Builders. This video is covering the fitting of the fiberglass quarter panels and some of the techniques that I use to get them to fit well and give you a factory look with the seams and lining up. There are a few things that are my techniques here. There are plenty of different ways to do it. So take it with a grain of salt, see what you like, and the end result that you're trying to end up with may drive you to a different technique. This is a Mark V Jetta. The process is exactly the same on the Mark IV Jetta. As I'm bolting in the aluminum bed and building the aluminum bed, I do some trial fits with the fiberglass to make sure I'm getting the bed in the right place that the fiberglass will hang in the right place. All right, so you have to do some trimming of the fiberglass quarter panels even before you get the aluminum bed mounted in and finished securing that to the car. In general, you can get it pretty close fitting it all the way before you even finish getting that aluminum bed in. But I'm going to start this video assuming that your aluminum bed is all screwed in and secured, bolted down and riveted. So we've got a few lines to worry about. My personal opinion is the first thing that people notice and the thing I am most worried about is getting this line on the top of the sill or the, the belt line or whatever you want to call this line, that corner of the door to match this corner of the quarter panel, both in, both in height and in and out. So I really start by looking at that corner and fitting this fiberglass. Sometimes it comes out different, both left and right. Sometimes you have to massage it a little bit to get it in there, and sometimes it's just trimming. Generally, if it's not right where you want it to be, it's sitting too high and you're trying to bring it down. Not always, but that's generally how it goes. Sometimes trimming the fiberglass back on this top here, and I've trimmed it back to here, will give you a little bit of flex in the top of the fender and get it to sit down just a little bit further. You got to kind of play with it. Another place to watch out for is if you haven't trimmed off enough steel here, that can make this quarter panel want to sit up. So you'll have to look in. You can open the door and look from the front to see what it's sitting on. If you drill your holes for the tail light, you can look back with a flashlight and you can find those points that is holding it where it is. Now you do want good contact here, but if you have too much contact up above that lip of the original steel fender, it may make the fiberglass set up, set high. You wanna check the tail end that you're getting the curve of the fiberglass up against the aluminum in the back. Sort of involved with this process, but it's really a whole nother step, is what are you gonna do for sills? The Mark IV and the Mark V Jettas are a little bit different in that the Mark V Jetta comes with a full sill from Smith Performance that you can use instead of the two-piece sill like on the Mark IVs. Personally, I really don't like the two-piece sill. And generally, I just go on eBay and order a set of aftermarket rocker panel or door sills, whatever you want to call it. And you can build it without that. You have to decide is what you're going to do. If you cut off the sill that is molded into the rear quarter panel, that will really help it sit down properly. And it will also help you get this lineup down towards the bottom of the door. If that fiberglass overlaps the factory steel, you're never going to get this bottom edge to line up. Your door is always going to be inset a little bit from the fiberglass. So I straight off cut that sill off the quarter panel. And how I do it is once I get this lineup and the door pretty close, now remember you're going to do some trimming on this fiberglass so the curve doesn't have to match exactly just yet, but it better be a small enough gap that you can cut it back. If you have too big a gap, now you're going to end up having to add material, which is a little bit harder. So if you can, you want to slide that forward so that the gap is less than what you really want to end up with. From that stage, I'll reach in from the front and mark along the inside of that quarter panel here along the bottom 
where I'm going to cut it. Now, you can't mark it all the way because there's steel back in this corner, but if you get 12 to 14 inches marked, then you can take the quarter panel back off, put a straight edge, and get a line. And then I cut it off. As you can see with this one here, it's cut off. Once I get that quarter panel pretty close, you know, about a 90% fit, I got the height right, and I have the back end lining up. Then I'll take that quarter panel off and start worrying about that filler panel that goes in here in the front edge on the, on the B pillar. So we're going to go over to the other side of the car and have a look at how I'm doing that. Once I have that quarter panel pretty close fit, then it's time to start working some of the aluminum bracing that's going to hold it exactly where I want it. The most challenging one is this B pillar filler plate. And when you first look at that, the first time I looked at it, I was like, how the heck does that go without making this just, it, it looks goofy, right? But once you bolt it on and start massaging it a little bit, it'll start to make sense. So the, my technique is go ahead and drill it and mount it. And you can see I, I have the driver's side here mounted. If you look at how it is, be careful closing the door. Sometimes you'll get an overlap there. So you don't want to chip a bunch of stuff up. So that's kind of a, a goofy fit. Now you could run with this and it would be fine. I shoot for a half inch from the back edge of the door and trying to get this aluminum to be parallel to the back of the door. You don't have to do that. For one, when the door's closed, nobody even sees this. So it's not super critical what this looks like in here but it depends on how you're building and what your goal is in your build. So you could, you could use it just like this and it would be fine. Functionally, it would be fine. But when you open the door and look at the front of the quarter panel there, you'll have varying gaps and things will look kind of funny. It also depends on whether you plan on doing any fill in here or you're just gonna do some seam sealer. Personally, I usually do a fill on this outside seam where this aluminum goes against the steel quarter panel and then I just use seam sealer on this seam against the original B pillar. Now you can fill that and sand it nice and smooth and paint it. You could seam seal both sides and just leave that sort of floating. It's up to you what you want to do but we're going to go through my technique here. So I got this drilled and bolted in and now what I'm going to do by playing with Bending the tabs, I'm going to cinch it down just a little bit here so I can put some force on it. We're going to bend these tabs, we're going to tweak it around, see how close we can get it to matching this curve of the back of the door. So I'm getting pretty close here. I've got the top three quarters about right. I just got to pull this back a little bit and I'm in there. There are several techniques for, for bending, and it depends on what you have. Uh, it's not hard. Uh, if you have a vise, that goes a long way. Most of the work I do is just putting it in the vise and then pulling on it. Sometimes you can use a open end wrench to slide it in there and, and tweak it a little bit, or you may find yourself wanting to take a two by four and cutting a little slit on it that then you can get a little more leverage and get a little deeper. And you can slide that in and, and get a little bit of tweak on it that way. Sometimes just using a, a rubber mallet helps. Sometimes you have to block it on the back from where you're hammering. But most often than not, I'm making small marks, taking it back off, and going over to the vise. It's not super critical to get it exactly to match, but of course it'll look better when you open the door the closer you get it in. Once you get it where you're happy with the contour, then the next step is to cut the outside edge. Now, as you contour it, that's gonna change. And be careful as you're bending this piece, watch that this gap isn't getting too big. And it's really an issue from, from this side, right? Sometimes as you start bending it, it'll actually come out, depending on which way you're torquing on it. Uh, try to keep that gap down to where you can caulk it with a uh, seam sealer 
or some, something of the like. My technique makes it very hard to do body filler on the back side and we'll see here in a little bit why that is. Okay, once you get that bent to where you're happy with it, the next step is getting this outside edge. Now obviously it has to be an eighth of an inch shorter than the door profile so that the fiberglass can lay on top of that. So I start my first trim just by tracing off the door and marking it right along the door profile right there. Then I take it back off and I cut it. You can use an uh, angle grinder, like a cutoff wheel. Uh, I use a body saw. This eighth inch aluminum cuts pretty well. You can use a jigsaw. Uh, just make sure you clamp it down well to the table or whatever you're cutting it with. So get that first cut in and then lay your fiberglass on there and see where your fiberglass is coming out. Make sure you're actually looking at what high points it's hitting because you'll find like where the curves are if they don't line up exactly with the fiberglass that maybe you actually have to grind it down in a different spot than you anticipated. If it's sitting high here, it may not be that that aluminum is holding it out. It may be that this indentation is not sitting in right and that's what's holding it out. So before you start grinding on it, make sure you look in from this side to see what's holding your fiberglass out. Back to the sill or the rocker panel, the next step I do after I get this fit is I put in a one inch by one inch aluminum angle that I just bolt down right here so that where I trim that fiberglass off, I have a surface to screw it to and panel bond it to. You'll find that anything bigger than one inch on the bottom flange won't sit into this sill correctly. It'll stick out too far. You got to make sure you set that back so that the fiberglass will come out flush. Now at some point it's going to come out past that sill, but I shoot to do that back here and I dent this steel in just a little bit to help me so there's a little bit less body work to do later on right at this point. So I set this parallel to this edge of the factory sill so that that fiberglass will sit right there and come out flush with that surface. Again, depends on what you want to do and how you want to work it and what kind of body work you want to do later on. You could go a bunch of different ways there. Once I get that flange on and this cut to where I want it to be, then I hang that quarter panel back on here, put a couple of self-tapping screws or a pop a couple rivets or something to hold it in the exact place where I want it. I make some marks in where they'll be visible here so that I can bolt this back in exactly the same place. It is important to be consistent with getting it in the same place every time because obviously your measurements and your trimming will be wrong if you get it bolted back in in a different place. I add a, a little bit here that gives something to support that quarter panel sitting across this here. It also makes it a little bit easier sealing that off later. Doesn't come with the kit, not mandatory. I use a two inch by two inch and put just a little more bend on it than the 90. So once we get that done, it'll look like this on the other side of the car. Once I got the quarter panel locked in place temporarily with a couple of self-tapping screws or pop a couple rivets, a couple of clamps in the back, then I could trim this front edge to match the door and get my gap exactly where I want it. And again, I can't stress the importance of making some marks so that when you get ready to put this quarter panel back on, you can put it exactly where it was because you made this gap to fit evenly for this position. So make sure you give yourself some easy references. Once I get that all trimmed, now I'm ready to put this all together. So I take some epoxy putty. I use Cabasil. You could use long hair filler, tiger hair, or something like that. Uh, I like to use an epoxy base so that it adheres to that aluminum well. What we're doing right now isn't super critical of the strength because we're not putting a lot of stress on it. 
but we do want something that later on we can put fill on top of and it will adhere to both surfaces and it will look good. So I use the Cabasil. I don't do a full fill because that stuff is really hard to sand. So I do maybe a 70% fill and let that set until it's fully cured. Once it's fully cured, then I take this quarter panel back off and I'm gonna do some fiberglassing on the inside that you will never even see, but that's where I'm gonna get the strength from. So let's go have a look at a quarter panel that's been fiberglassed together. So here's my quarter panel laying on the table. And what I'm talking about fiberglassing is this inside right here. So we did a little bit of fill just to hold that aluminum in place. And you can see I've started my Bondo work on top of that to make that a smooth transition. It's a little bit easier while it's off the car. So I recommend doing that before you bolt your quarter panel all the way back on. What you use for fiberglass in here is up to you. Again, it's not a high load, but we'd much rather overdo it than have it fail, right? So I put two or three coats on. I like to use roving. And then I put a, a coat of, or a layer of weave on top of it. You kind of have to work in little bits because of the curves. Uh, you'll, you'll get some bubbles, right? And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be pretty because nobody's ever going to see it. But we want the strength there. On this one, I did a couple layers of mat. It's fairly heavy mat, making sure I get a good wet out. And then a couple layers of weave just to kind of pretty it up. And make sure you prep the back side of your aluminum well. And again, I'm using an epoxy based resin and you want to prep the fiberglass well. Get it tucked down into that corner to give you some rigidity. And now you have it. It's one piece. So to hold this whole front end on, you simply have to put those two bolts in. And hopefully we marked everything and did everything so it'll go right back where it wants to go. Now back to convenience. Uh, it's not super critical, but it's just more convenient. I like to go ahead and finish this Bondo work right, and get a nice smooth transition. And then I go ahead and put a coat of epoxy based primer on there so that it will adhere to the aluminum. Remember when you're painting on aluminum, you need self etching primer or an epoxy primer to adhere well to it. And it needs a good scuff right before you spray it down. So I'm going to finish that. And I may even put some red on it uh, so that I don't have to paint in there when this quarter panel is on. Depends on how you want to take your steps. Uh, but that's my personal technique. So here we have my quarter panel fitted. I just need to finish up a couple of things underneath it. And then I'll be ready to do some paint and get this thing on. Here's what it looks like in the front. So this is the gap that I'll use some seam sealer and then paint over it. And I'm gonna paint this yet before I put this on all the way. So hopefully that helps. It can be a little bit tricky putting your quarter panels on and that makes such a difference in the end product, how your build comes out. Of course, what you're doing with it uh, makes, you know, what level that you want to build it to. If you're just going to daily drive it and haul stuff around or you're planning to go to shows with it or what have you. But hopefully that gives you some ideas. There are other techniques. And now you can see how a standard rocker panel will fit or you can clean up the one that comes from Smith and fit it in, or you can do it without. With just a little bit of body work down in this back corner, this is gonna look really clean and pretty factory. So you got three or four options there, just depending on what look that you're going for. So I finally got the quarter panel on. The footage of me actually working it didn't come out. You couldn't see anything anyway. I apologize. We're just gonna have to talk our way through it. Make sure that you have everything done underneath the quarter panel before you go put it on. Nothing is more frustrating than getting that quarter panel on and realizing you didn't quite finish the wiring or you didn't get the tie down in or something. So give yourself a good review 
and make sure you have all that done. Then trial fit that quarter panel a couple of times to make sure you can get it exactly where you want it every time. Nothing is more frustrating than having panel bond everywhere and you're trying to fit this quarter panel on and it's not going where you want it and now you're sliding it around and you're getting panel bond everywhere. If you take it off, you got to clean all that panel bond off, which is a job. If you leave it on, now you're wondering, oh, did I get enough? Is, do I need to shoot some more in those cracks? So to prevent that, to allevi alleviate that problem, make sure you can put that on. Just practice. How are you going to lift it on? I'm usually lifting right here and a hand inside here and lifting it on, kind of set it down from the top. Practice that a couple of times. Make sure you have your tools handy. Make sure you've prepped all the surfaces where there's going to be panel bond. Wipe them down, let them dry. Don't forget the back side of the quarter panel itself. Then my procedure. I put panel bond across the top, across the rail to about halfway. I get this from here in the wheel arch and then across the bottom. Get that all panel bonded up. I've got my tools and my bolts laying there. I set it into place and I set one clamp just loosely across the top to keep that panel from falling off. Now, it's a lot easier to do it with two people and one person can hold it, but I've been doing them by myself now for a while. It, it's not that big a deal. Get that clamp just enough to keep this from falling off and then I get those two bolts in. I don't really torque them down but I get them enough so that it's not going to shift. Then I'll winch this on and put a couple of self-tapping screws in the top. I should cover that. I use a lot of self-tapping screws. I don't like to leave the hardware and then body fill over it. It always seems to show. So, and, and I trust panel bond. So I use self-tapping screws and then take them back out and fill the holes. You can use rivets and then body fill over. And actually on this top rail, it really doesn't matter except you got to countersink whatever you use in there. I find it easiest just to use self-tapping screws because you can just burp, 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 burp. You can run those things in and you're not trying to line up with the hole you already made, pop the rivet, oh, did I countersink it enough, etc., etc. Once I get once I get a couple of bolts in here, I'll lift this back end just a little bit and shoot panel bond the rest of the way here, drop it back down and put a clamp on in the back here to get this pulled all the way over. Then I'll go ahead and tighten those bolts up, run self-tapping screws all the way across the top, run these down here. Of course, before you start running all those, close the door and check your gap. So I really do that after running those first two screws in the top here to make sure you're getting it set down all the way. If, if your gap gets bigger or smaller one way or the other, the back end has to go up or down if you have this line up perfect. Once I get those set screws all run in, you can see the four clamps I put here. You could use set screws there, but that just makes more holes that you got to fill later. So if I don't have to use a screw, I prefer to clamp, but there's nothing wrong with using the screws. Uh, I have also used rivets here. What you feel like doing and how you want to do it, that obviously is up to you. I got the clamp in the back and then I get the other side on. I try to get the roll pan on at the same time, which means you have to have the roll pan prepped and fitted before you start gluing your quarter panels on. The reason I try to fit as many panels as I can at once is simply to reduce the number of panel bond nozzles I need. If I can get both quarter panels on and the roll pan on with using one nozzle, then that leaves me the other nozzle that comes in the package to do the rear window surround. You can buy extra nozzles. I have bought extras just so I never run out. 
It isn't critical, but that's why I'm trying to do three panels at once, and then that leaves me the second nozzle for the rear window surround. Isn't that important? Don't sweat it. If you don't have everything prepped or it's not going together right, don't keep gluing stuff. That panel bond is a nightmare to try to undo, so make sure it fits the way you want it. Now we'll set the camera in the back so we can see how the roll pan goes on. To prep your roll pan to put on, I recommend removing all of the gel coat in that step down so you're gluing fiberglass to the back side of the fiberglass of the quarters. And sometimes you'll have to cut a little bit of this corner out because of the curve of the quarter panel won't allow it to, to set down all the way. So take your time in fitting it before you have glue out, before you got that panel bond out, and make sure you have this fit. Sometimes you have to cut a relief in the top for where it goes against the side there. Hopefully you can see it here. I have a two inch hitch. I love this hitch. It comes out in the perfect spot there, right below the roll pan. Uh, it's a fantastic hitch, but it does move the bumper back just a hair. This roll pan is actually touching that steel bumper underneath. Once I get it fit, I set it in there, put a clamp on one side, open it up, shoot, the, shoot my panel bond in, bring it back and put one clamp on. Then I switch to the other side, take the clamp off that's there, shoot my panel bond in, put the clamp back on to hold it. Then I check some measurements here and here to make sure I have it level or at least parallel to this. If you don't have it parallel to this, you're gonna have an uneven gap once you put the tailgate on. So I try to get that parallel, plus when you put the brace, this isn't the brace, but I just use this to help measuring. When you put this brace in, it looks cleaner, of course, if all of that is parallel. So before I go too far clamping, and I just am kinda holding it in place with two clamps, I check those measurements, once I get it exactly where I want it, then I'll go ahead and put three clamps on it. These clamps work fantastic. You can use self-tapping screws. I've done that plenty of times. And then get the other side and then check your measurements again. Now you just got to wait for it to cure. There are different schools of thought on how much work to do to the quarter panels before you put them on. And it really boils down to personal preference and how you like to work. It isn't super critical. There's a lot of things that don't really matter whether you do it before or after mounting it. And some of them, it actually gets harder if you do it before you mount it, and some things are much easier. So it's up to your personal preference. Think about it a little bit. Uh, you can see I did some initial body work on these ones. I didn't do paint. It is kind of nice if you've already shot it in primer. You're going to have to put some more primer on it anyway, but you're really just at the seams. Probably the extreme is to go ahead and shoot it with your final paint and then glue it on. You may want to mask off at the seam so you don't get any adhesive too far out onto your nice paint. Um, you're going to have to work those seams a little bit, but that is a very viable option. The opposite end of the spectrum is taking them out of the crate trimming them a little bit and putting them on. I like to do the initial sanding when it's on a table flat and I can take it out front where the dust isn't getting in the shop and I can use the body file and my long uh, straight boards, right? And I can really work it. Um, it's up to you what you want to do. So that's my technique for getting the quarter panels on and how I mount them. Hopefully that helps you, maybe gives you some ideas. I appreciate you tuning in. Like and subscribe, all the support helps. Good luck on your builds. If you have good ideas or questions, put them down in the comments and that will help the next guy that watches this video and we'll just keep getting that knowledge base built up and up and up and we'll all keep getting better. Take care.